Traditional Chinese medicine is quite a bit further along than Western medicine in one specific regard, and that is that it never suffered from this idea that the mind and the body are two different things. And because that's true, it has always treated the combination as an energetic phenomenon. We are a phenomenon of energy that, that the Chinese call it qi, qi, sometimes spelled ch apostrophe i. And that qi is vitality, it's the, uh, the bioelectric energy of life, and there are, uh, by the way, a bunch of other definitions for it, um, precisely because we don't know, in Western terms, what exactly it is. And the reason we don't know is a big subject, but a short way of understanding it is that it is a multifactorial phenomenon. That means there's a lot of different ingredients to it. And we tend to like to, to, to identify one thing and say, ah, this is qi, uh, infrared uh, uh, radiation, low frequency sound, uh, DNA, uh, uh, electricity, um, chemistry. And in fact, qi is a, is a phenomenon of many different facets. But in any case, looking at the body as a body of, uh, as an energetic entity means that we have a much closer idea of how things really are than when we're just looking at, at the meat. And so when you inject that insight about how the body works, really, in concert with the mind, how it all becomes one thing, and you put that into one of the legs that holds Tai Chi up, then you have a real big advantage over many other things that you could be doing with your spare time. Stress, remember, is a construct of your mind-body. Stress is not something that comes in from outside. Stress is something that comes up from within and moves out. Circumstances outside your body, your environment, cause your body stress. Stress is something that your body creates in response to external circumstances. So if you understand that stress is not an external thing that you cannot control, but stress conversely and very specifically is something that you create with your mind-body, then training and changing your mind-body by learning to relax, learning to breathe, learning to move, and learning to prioritize because you're embracing a uh, practice that gives you a different philosophy and a different way of looking at life, has very immediate and measurable benefits in terms of the stress that you create for yourself in response to uh, incoming stimuli. In addition to helping you manage stress, Tai Chi can do another very particular thing for you. It has all of the benefits of any moderate intensity exercise with very, very few of the risks associated with injury from that kind of exercise, and also very few of the characteristics that many people eschew, many people don't like about doing moderate exercise. Whether it's that they don't like doing the same thing over and over, they don't like getting sweaty, um, they don't like a gym environment, they don't like running. I mean, you know, there, there's a litany of things that people don't like that, that give them an excuse not to do moderate exercise, which I define as something more than walking. So, Tai Chi is, is actually providing you with all the benefits that many other moderate exercises do, and of course some additional ones. But it does this in a way that doesn't trigger that, oh, I don't want to do that, I don't want to get up and do that, that, that reaction that a lot of people have when they think, when, when somebody tells them, whether it's their doctor or a spouse, tells them that they have to go. Uh, out and exercise. They need to lose weight or they need to get in better shape or whatever. And, and how is that true? It's true because number one, Tai Chi is actually a very interesting and intricate thing. It takes quite a lot of study and thinking and practice to focus on it and it's not boring. A lot of times um, uh, moderate exercise can be boring. That's why everybody does it wearing an iPod. 
um, because you know you don't really want to be thinking about the pain in your ankle or your knee while you're doing it or how out of breath you are you just have to push through push through and and so you distract yourself if you're if you're riding a stationary bike at home you do it while you're watching TV if you're out on a jogging track you you you, you use a uh, an iPod or an mp3 player of some kind we do those things because we want to get away from the exercise and just get it done Tai Chi is all about being present during the exercise, but being present in a pleasurable way. And when you focus in the way that Tai Chi demands, you get a very specific type of benefit that comes from using the mind-body the way it was designed to be used. And the benefits that come from that kind of thing include not only the physical benefits of moderate exercise, such as better aerobic uh, condition, lower uh, blood pressure, uh, more energy, but also it has some mental benefits. Because one of the things that happens when you practice Tai Chi is you become very calm. You, you find an equanimity in your uh, in your emotional responsiveness, which may be new to you and is especially delicious in a world that thrives on getting a rise out of us. Physical training is just now in the West beginning to discover how spiral training and spiral movements make you run faster, make you quicker, stronger, and Top trainers all over the country are beginning to employ spiral movements as a way of enhancing athletic performance at the very cutting edge. Tai Chi has been doing spiral movements for a thousand years. And spiral is an interesting shape because we see it when we look up at the heavens, we see the galaxies are in a spiral. We see it when we watch water going down the drain. We see it when, when our thunderstorm gives rise to a tornado. We see it in dust devils. It is the most common way that nature expresses power and movement. And in doing the spiral movement, Tai Chi can give us flexibility in, in a special way. And to help illustrate this, let me see if some of you may remember that there are little balsa wood airplanes. Uh, that we used to buy and, and put together and fly, and they had a rubber band, an inexpensive toy, simple toy. And it would come with a rubber band in the package, you'd put the airplane together, and then you would stretch the rubber band from its uh, origin at the little plastic propeller all the way back to a hook at the tail of the airplane. And you'd have to pull the rubber band to do that. And you would stretch it, and, and, and it would just barely make the hook and you'd have to pull on it a little bit and hook it on. And then you would wind the propeller to get your little airplane ready to fly. Of course, what you were doing is you were storing energy in that rubber band and then when you let it go, the propeller would spin and the airplane would go. If you were brave, you went beyond the first level of knots in the rubber band to a second level of knots in the rubber band. Of course, I say brave because if you go too far, you know you might snap the rubber band. But if you wanted your plane to go a little further and a little faster, you would do that and you'd get a second row of knots. And if you were crazy, really risk, really embracing the risk, you might even go to a third row of knots on the rubber band, at which point you'd let it go and the thing would go boom and take off. The interesting thing is that when you retrieve the airplane after this, you would notice that the rubber band which was previously tight on the airplane, it was now sagging. And it would sag down beneath the body of the airplane. That's because spiraling movement like this stretched the rubber band just as effectively, if not more, than pulling on it. So many stretching exercises in conventional exercise, you, you assume a position and you stretch a muscle in a straight line. Tai Chi does every kind of movement in a spiral so over time your joints and your muscles and even some of your connective tissue can loosen and become freer in your movement. So by definition because this is a mind-body practice when you are doing Tai Chi and you suddenly start to think about what's for lunch or you suddenly start to think about uh, whether 
uh, you know, the babysitter is reliable, or you suddenly start to think about um, that deal, that phone call you've been waiting for. The moment you are distracted from awareness and mindful attention to your physical practice right now, Tai Chi, by definition, goes out the window and does not return until you bring your mind back. So learning to pay attention to what your emotions are and what your body is doing and what your mind has a habit of doing in terms of distraction is a very useful skill. That, that mindfulness is much vaunted in meditation circles and it, it's very, very present in Tai Chi practice too.